Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to be looking at heating systems, and at this time the specific case of having a Y-plan heating system with an unvented hot water cylinder. Now Y-plan is a fairly old system, and it's the one where you have a single valve with three ports. Uh, one is the inlet, and then you have one outlet for the hot water cylinder, and one outlet for your radiators. And the uh, basic problem with these in terms of unvented cylinders is that the default position of that valve is to have the hot water open, so if there was no power going to it, and the water was still circulating, it will still circulate via the hot water cylinder. And this is no good for an unvented cylinder, because unlike a vented arrangement, if an unvented cylinder gets too hot, then of course there is a possibility of it turning into a large bomb, and although the cylinder has various uh, pressure relief valves and temperature valves on it, it's certainly a case that you need to prevent energy being put into the thing in the event of some kind of failure. So uh, using the Y plan or the uh, three port valve alone is not sufficient because say if power failed to that it defaults to the open position. So uh, what's actually done is you need to add in a second valve which is a two port valve and this is one which will then cut off the supply of water to the cylinder so at the event of some kind of failure and the cylinder gets far too hot power will disconnect from that valve, it will close and then prevent hot water from the boiler going into the cylinder itself. Now before we look at the wiring, this is just a brief overview of how the plumbing side will work. And bear in mind this is a massive simplification. So essentially what we've got is a boiler, and for the purposes of this we're going to assume that the pump is actually inside the boiler as well, and a three-port valve there. One outlet goes to the radiators, just got one radiator shown there, and that returns to the boiler. And then the other outlet goes to the hot water cylinder, and again that returns to the boiler. So that's the sort of basic setup. And the two-port valve actually goes, as shown here, on the outlet of the three-port. So it's essentially between the three-port valve outlet and the input to the cylinder. Now for operation, the hot water, of course, comes out of the boiler and goes into the three-port valve. And then for the radiators, then that just comes out of the valve there, goes to the radiators, which of course heat up, and that's what heats the rooms in the house. And then that water returns to the boiler also being somewhat cooler than it started out. So that's the sort of heating side of it. And for the cylinder side, it's pretty much the same deal. So again, hot water comes out of the boiler there, goes across, and in this case it will go into the two-port valve. Assuming that valve is open, then the hot water will flow through the coil inside the cylinder. That will, of course, heat up the water inside there. And then the water again returns to the boiler. And again, it will be somewhat cooler than it left the boiler. Obviously that heat being put into the hot water cylinder. And the purpose of having that two-port valve there is that once power has been disconnected from that, the default position of that is closed, as it's closed with a spring inside. So just by removing power to that valve, it will stop the flow of water into the hot water cylinder. So even if the boiler was still running, you would only get this situation here. You would get sort of hot water, and it can't actually go beyond the two-port valve, so there's no circulation going on whatsoever and that will prevent the cylinder from getting dangerously hot. Now if you didn't have that two-port valve, and this will be the case with a normal vented cylinder, the uh, valve to the hot water by default is permanently open, so even if you cut power to the three-port valve, its default state is open to the hot water, so you could have a situation where something has failed, and therefore even if the controls had cut power to the valve, unfortunately the situation would be that the boiler would still be running, and hot water would be circulating through there, through the open by default port, and it would basically just be heating the cylinder pretty much continuously, because there's nothing actually there to stop the flow of water from the boiler. And the end result would be that the cylinder would get dangerously hot, and of course when you heat water it expands, and in a closed and pressurised thing like an unvented cylinder, that can build up to a very dangerous level. And though there are of course safety devices on the cylinder to vent out any excess pressure and whatever, the point is that's not supposed to happen at all. And in the worst case scenario, the cylinder could obviously explode and turn into a giant bomb. So obviously that's something that needs to be avoided. So that's really the reason for putting the extra two-port valve in there. So regardless of whether the boiler is working or not, cutting power to that valve will close the valve off and prevent water flowing to the cylinder, regardless of what the rest of the system is doing. Now let's have a look at the electrical wiring. And what we've got here is the standard Y-plan wiring arrangement. Now I have actually covered this in another video in some detail, so if you haven't seen that already then of course links to that are in the usual place. So I say in this case we're only really looking at the hot water side, and this is the section which is just basically the cylinder thermostat there at the bottom right, and the uh, controls of course the programmer there 
on the right side as well. And because the valve defaults to hot water open, when you actually want to have hot water, the valve itself doesn't receive any power at all. All that happens is what we've got here shown in the red. So power comes from the programmer there through pin number 3, goes through the uh, terminal 6 in the junction box to the cylinder thermostat, assuming the thin thermostat is uh, actually on, in which case, of course, heating is required there. That just returns power to terminal number 8 in the wiring centre, and terminal 8 is where the boiler switched line is connected. And we can see that just highlighted there in red. So uh, all to get hot water, or heat the hot water, all you need is simply to shove power to the boiler switch live. The valve, of course, is not actually involved at all. And although there is the orange wire connected there, which of course will become live there, the orange wire is actually a switched output from the valve, so the connection that's live doesn't do anything with the valve at all. So it will just sit there and pretty much do nothing. Now the two items which are added with an unvented cylinder are the two-port valve, which we've seen previously, so that's obviously what cuts off the water supply in the case of some kind of problem. And there's also a second thermostat, which we've got shown here at the bottom as a high-limit thermostat. And this is a thermostat which, when the temperature of the water reaches a certain point, this will open and cut off the supply of power to the valve. And crucially, unlike the other type of thermostat, once this has opened, it doesn't reset automatically. So essentially, if the cylinder gets too hot and this thing opens, it will stay open until someone actually goes in and manually resets the thing. And this is an important safety feature, so that if something does go wrong, it's not just a question of it then returning to normal operation later. Someone has to actually go in there and at least reset the thing manually and ideally find out why it overheated in the first place. So the method of operation in this case is fairly similar to what we had before. So power will come from the programmer there on terminal 3 with hot water on. It goes through to uh, terminal 6 there in the wiring centre. And just as before, it goes to that cylinder thermostat. The difference here is that the output from the cylinder thermostat, which is uh, pin 1 here, actually goes into the high limit thermostat. Now this is a normally closed thing, so in normal circumstances the power just goes straight through there and out on pin number 2. And then that goes into the two-port valve. This will activate the valve motor and open the valve. And then when the valve has actually opened, a switch inside the valve will then connect the orange wire coming out of there to the live input. And that's what goes back to terminal 8 in the wiring centre and turns on the boiler just as we had previously. And in the case of the uh, cylinder overheating and that high limit thermostat opening, all that happens is the power can still go through the normal thermostat and whatever, but it can't then reach the two-port valve. It cuts power to the boiler as well, so in normal operation that would obviously switch off the boiler, but even if some other fault, which meant the boiler was still running for some reason, the point about the valve is that after the motor has no power, the spring in the valve will close, and that prevents any hot water going to the cylinder, regardless of what's going on in the rest of the system. Now, although on this diagram we've got the cylinder thermostat and the additional high-limit thermostat shown as separate items, in the real world, in almost all cases, these two things are actually built into the same casing, and they fit onto the side of the cylinder as a single unit. It's just a question of you've got two separate items in there, and generally they have uh, two separate sensing parts, so although they're in the same casing, they are mechanically and, of course, electrically separated. So in terms of the actual wiring, the link there between the cylinder thermostat and the high-limit thermostat is usually just a wire link between the two appropriate terminals, and then you're just using the output wires as we've got there. So the uh, incoming there on C and 2 on the cylinder thermostat, and then your output is 2 on the high-limit thermostat. So uh, although a stage step up there, they are generally combined into a single device. I've got a couple of pictures here of some fairly typical examples. So we've actually got the uh, knob on the front there with the temperature marking, so that's your normal cylinder thermostat. And then the other one is usually just a button or something like that on the front, so it doesn't have any adjustment. And I say as before, when it is actually tripped, it will stay in the tripped condition. It does not automatically reset. And we can see on this one you've got the two actual sensing vials coming off of the back there, so so though it's in the same casing, it is two entirely separate devices. And as for the two-port valve, it's just a standard uh, two-port valve you can buy from any kind of plumbing emporium. However, in many cases, if you actually buy an unvented cylinder, it will often actually be supplied with the two-port valve as part of the deal, and often you get the uh, thermostats and things all come with it as well, as it's uh, generally all bundled up into a standard package there. So it's fairly unlikely you have to go and buy this sort of thing separately. And certainly if it's already been plumbed in or whatever, which is obviously fairly likely, it's just going to be a question of connecting up the appropriate wiring. 
So the rest of the system is pretty much exactly the same as a standard Y plan and all we're really changing is the connections to the cylinder thermostat. So rather than it just going via the thermostat and returning to the wiring centre, it goes to the thermostat, into the high limit thermostat, usually in the same container, and then the output of that goes to the two-port valve, and then the switched output from the valve is what returns to the wiring centre. And the valve has the other three connections, which are just labelled 1, 2 and 3 here, and those just go back to the 1, 2 and 3 in the wiring centre, which is the permanent line, neutral, and of course the earth connection. So that's what you do in the specific case of having an existing Y plan system, and then you want to add in an invented hot water cylinder to that, such as replacing say, an older vented type. And if you're going to put in a whole new system completely from nothing, then it's really not worth going down the Y plan route at all. You might as well just put it in as S plan from the beginning, and S plan is the one where you have a two port valve for each part of the system. So in the case of that, you would have a two port valve for the hot water cylinder, and then you have another one for the heating circuit. And if you've got multiple heating zones, then of course you have an extra valve for each one of those. And certainly a new system, that's certainly a much better arrangement, and it avoids the problem of that Y plan defaulting to open altogether. So it is really only for an existing one where you're upgrading to an unvented, but uh, nevertheless that can be fairly useful, and it's certainly easier just to add in that extra valve rather than start changing the entire system to something else. So that's it for this time. There are other videos in this heating series, so links to those in the usual places. And until next time, thanks for watching.